My name is Georgia broder Munyon, and I am the volunteer coordinator here at the Humane Society of North Texas. We train on the job. Um, people that do have special skills with animals are, are probably put in priority um, as opposed to people that don't have skills though. I actually have a degree in entomology. I deal with the arachnids. Anytime we get any of the creepy crawlies in, I'll deal with those such as like snakes, um, spiders. Um, your centipedes, scorpions, things of that nature. I'll deal with that. I also deal with the smaller animals like rats, mice. Last year we adopted almost 8,000 animals out. Um, that doesn't include the animals that go to um, rescue groups, other shelters and organizations. When it comes to cats, people aren't really that particular. I mean, you'll have, occasionally have a person that's looking for a specific breed, but I've noticed that most people actually look at the personality of the cat versus breed. One thing that I've loved about the Humane Society of North Texas is that we don't look at how much income a person has because it's all based on where your priorities are. So it can be regardless of your income situation. We look at housing. Um, if they own their own home, that's fantastic. If they rent, we just check with the landlord and make sure that the landlord has either received a pet deposit or they are going to pay a pet deposit and that they allow the animal in their apartment or their rent house. We are a nonprofit. 100% uh, of our operating expenses come from contributions from the public. The number of animals we have coming in, which is, you know, mostly dogs and cats, but horses, guinea pigs, rabbits, uh, tigers, you know, we never know what we're going to get from one day to the next. The number of animals coming in our shelter had averaged about 25,000 a year in recent years. However, last year we were over 32,000 and this year we're probably going to hit 35,000 because many of the other local agencies have closed their admission and stopped taking animals. Many of the animal controls facing budget cuts have decided that that's the way to handle their cuts is to not take in any more animals. Labs are the number one most popular breed in the country. We get more labs and lab mixes than anything else. Probably number two for us here in Fort Worth is pit bulls. Unfortunately, pit bulls are probably number two on the number we receive, but not number two on the animals we adopt out. They're not bad dogs. We get a lot of wonderful pit bulls that make wonderful pets. We adopt out more pit bulls than any other shelter in North Texas. However, it's still only a fraction of the number we get brought in. For us, when we're choosing animals to go into our adoption program, number one is temperament. Uh, you know, we can't place aggressive animals. A lot of people bring in an animal, oh, he'd be a wonderful pet for somebody, but he bites everybody at my house. Well, we can't send out an animal that's going to bite everyone in someone else's house. So temperament is the number one. Sometimes it's health, you know. Ba small health problems, we can still put them up for adoption, but if it's something that's going to cost a new owner a thousand or two thousand dollars a year to manage, it's going to be pretty hard to find anyone to take that on. We have a lot of vets that, that we work with that'll do an initial free exam for people. We want them to get into a vet, get a re relationship established with a vet as soon as possible. That way, if anything does go wrong, they've got somebody that knows them and knows their dog or knows their cat. <coughs>
I'm the director of operations, so I see all the day-to-day -day activities as well as handling all the adoptions and staff training. Um, most of our training comes through just hands-on. Um, I've been a manager for most of our departments and I also worked a year in our cruelty investigations. We have over 250 active volunteers at this location and average 600 volunteer hours a month. We do have a big junior volunteer program, so we're one of the few shelters in the area that allows children to volunteer with their parents. Last year, our particular location took in 500 animals from owner surrenders. Um, we are a no-kill facility, so any animal that's brought into our location is going to get a home. Last year alone, we did 1,500 adoptions, which means we're averaging around 125 animals a month. You know, we get a lot of puppies. Um, our animals, there's not really a specific breed that's coming in, but most of our animals are coming in due to people moving or the health of the owner. Basically, the way it works, people come in from 10 to 6 daily. If they find an animal they're interested in adopting, um, they fill out an adoption application and we pre-approve them. Once that's done, if they're pre-approved, then we do the adoption paperwork, which takes about 20 minutes. Um, if the animal hasn't been spayed or neutered yet, we take them to be fixed and then they pick them up afterwards. And our adoption fee is $150. What our adoption fee covers is the spay and neuter, microchip, current vaccinations and deworming, um, their heartworm tests or feline leukemia tests, and then you get 30 days of free pet insurance and a free vet exam. Most of our volunteers help with the cleaning, they help bathe the animals, they help do the daily walks. Um, a lot of them will also help with our off-site events. As far as donations are concerned, we are always in need of, um, we use Purina One dog and cat food, cat litter, bleach, um, paper towels, any dog related items, toys, blankets, newspaper, just about anything animal related we can take in.